Welcome to Greece. For the last three weeks, we've been bouncing around to some of the Greek islands and it's been a blast. And as we've been doing so, I've noticed something very obvious about the buildings here. And it's that a large majority of them, if not almost all of them, are painted two colors, white and blue. And these are colors that you don't just see on the buildings, you kind of see everywhere. And once I started to see it and notice it, I couldn't unsee it. Blue doors, blue windows, blue furniture, blue signs, even a suspicious number of the cars here on the islands are blue. blue, blue so this sent me down a rabbit hole trying to find the answer to why everything are these two colors. And the answer is gonna surprise you. I almost guarantee it. So let's talk about why all the buildings on the Greek islands are white and blue. The sights and sounds of Greece stun you nearly as much as the warmth of her climate and her people. The stage for 3,000 years of history. If we're going to answer this question, why white and blue, one of the first things we need to acknowledge is that. That's the sun. Because here on the islands in the summertime, it is extremely hot. So it is the middle of July right now, and I can confirm it's hot. And traditionally here on the Greek islands, the houses have been made of volcanic rock, which are blacks and darks and really good at absorbing the sun's heat. Is it hot in here or what? And so people would paint their houses and you'd see light tans, maybe a light yellow, but predominantly white. So the first and most practical reason why people are painting their houses is to protect against the sun's heat. But this is where things get interesting because in the 1930s, there's actually a law passed forcing people to paint their houses white. Now to understand why a paint law was passed in the 1930s, we first need to talk about the water on the islands. The water on the islands, even today, isn't really drinkable. And if you were to go back to the 1930s, you can imagine it was even less so. And in 1934, this led to a bit of a cholera outbreak. Cholera, in fact, is the most urgent problem of the new government. Flies and contaminated food and water helped to spread the epidemic, which has already hit many provinces and cities throughout the island. And as cholera was kind of making an outbreak through the islands, the leader at the time, he had an idea. He's like, you know what? We need to create a law. A law forcing everyone to paint their houses white. <laughs> you serious? Sounds silly, but it actually makes sense because this white paint is made from a limestone composite. And limestone has disinfecting properties. By forcing people to whitewash their house a couple times a year, they would effectively be disinfecting the world around them and helping to stop the spread of cholera. But that is not where the story ends. <laughs> because the plot thickens. There is a second paint law. One of the things that I find really charming about the Greek islands are all the tiny little painted doors. Like, what is this door for? I don't know, but there's all kinds of little, like, tiny, tiny little doors. Look at these tiny little doors. Like, who's walking through them? What are they used for? I don't know but they are adorable. Grease man, it's just, it's such a vibe. Cute little door. So the 1930s come and go, the cholera outbreak, it kind of goes away. The ruler of the time who said everyone must paint their houses white, he's no longer in power. And so some people are painting their houses white, some aren't. There's no one really enforcing the rules. But then late 1960s come and a military dictatorship takes over. Army tanks rolled into Athens and took up positions outside all important government buildings in the royal palace. In a broadcast, the new government proclaimed the death of party politics. There's no longer left, right and center, they said, only Greeks. So the dictatorship comes in, they just overthrew the government and they're like, what can we do to unify everyone? And someone's like, I have an idea. Let's make 
Allah. Oh boy, here we go again. You see where this is going? Yes, they make a second paint law, forcing everyone to paint their houses not only white, but blue this time, representing the national flag and the colors. And it works, you start seeing these colors everywhere. You see it in the clothes people are wearing, the furniture, the boats, and yes, even the buildings. But of course, the dictatorship, it doesn't last. Greece today is a republic, but the damage has already been done because these two colors are here to stay. And so are the final piece of this puzzle, tourists. Let's check out how busy it is at sunset, because it's usually crazy packed. Ooh, I already see people. Ooh, this place is packed. Now, it's no secret that tourists love these white and blue buildings. I mean, why wouldn't they? They are adorable. And it's the reason why millions and millions of people flock to these islands every year. They look great in pictures and people have taken notice. And in a lot of ways, these buildings and these colors have become a calling card for Greece all over the world. You could even argue that the dictatorship was kind of right in that by forcing people to paint their houses white and blue, they brought together an entire nation and the people within it around an idea. And it worked. And that is it. Temperature, tourists, a disease, and a dictatorship are why all the houses on the Greek islands are white and blue. Bet you didn't see that coming. All right, guys, that is where I'm gonna end this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have, leave a like, subscribe, do all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace from Greece. That rhymes. See you guys. <laughs>